Yeah, good morning, guys. Uh, if you will, this is the calm before the storm, and but not even that because they've already been dealing what the stress is of being in a border town. I want to bring in Mayor Nieves Rydell, who, uh, by the way, this is a call that we've heard from our state, our county, and local officials now calling on to the government to, you're going to need help. It's the stresses of your health services, your uh, police services, your medical services, uh, what we see coming up ahead, you see it'll be a big problem for you guys. It is going to be, it, it's going to be a complete catastrophe. It's something that we experienced, but in a lower level in the month of December. Now, this is bigger. Uh, we just within walking distance to Mexico, and in Mexico there's over 4,500 families waiting to come across. How are they going to come across? They, they, yesterday we had an incident that a couple of uh, uh, groups rushed the border. And one of the biggest things that we have, we're a unique port. This is an agricultural hub. Uh, about uh, 10,000 people comes in and out a day and they come and work in the fields. And lately, they've been doing some drills and they close the border. We've been told by, by the authorities at the border that if they feel fit, and their men and women are in danger, they, they're going to close the border for days at a time. Also, Georgia, and our economy is going Georgia to take a bit hit. A I mean, we were just coming out of the catastrophe called COVID-19, uh, uh, and now we have these in our hands. We need all the help we can get. And this is our federal government failing all of us at our municipality, county, state level, we basically by ourselves. Uh, I don't know what's going on in Washington, but they need to come and see what's going on in our communities. Here's what's scary. The folks that we are showing early on today, those are folks that are turning themselves in. You just mentioned an incident where folks are just running past, but when they run through the, those borders, the next thing they hit are your neighborhoods. Uh, exactly, like yesterday, they scatter, okay? And they come just right where our uh, a financial district is, and it's already hurting. You you go to downtown, you see some of the stores they already closed. Now people are panicking, and when they uh, when they rushed, it's pretty bad, because we're within walking distance. But they're not just coming through there; they're coming through 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 the sites. And within walking distance, we have neighborhoods. And the chief is a person that can tell you how our resources are being depleted because there is that danger, because not everybody that is coming over is coming with good intentions. We had criminals yeah, coming Chief, over. I, and that's the thing, Chief, you were just telling me you had to clear a home that was an empty home because folks just ran and just went and hid inside those homes. That's what you have to deal with with your officers. Absolutely, that's the strength that we get here in law enforcement throughout the border, uh, being a border city, most and foremost. Uh, we constantly have people calling that there's crawlers, what we call them, inside of their homes or suspicion that somebody's locked in their homes because they left and their home is open. Uh, so that, that's, a, that's our biggest worry, making sure that our community might not be safe uh, once we get this large crowds running across the border violently, basically trying to trespass into other people's property and bring things that we probably don't want in this country. And it really uh, takes away from us doing other things. Uh, we don't have the amount of resources needed to be able to take on this task by ourselves. And again, our, our main concern is the safety of the public. And the main concern as well is to ensure that nothing horrible is coming into our country that's gonna continue to hurt the citizens. So that, that's, that's our focus here. Uh, within Yuma County, we are, have really good partnerships with the local law enforcement agencies. I know the federal agencies in our county, uh, they're, they're busy processing and they're not around the border. So, and we have to take that stance and, and try to protect our border to avoid um, tragedies from occurring around our city. And more than one time, we have to lock down schools as well because our children go to go back to their homes at 2 p.m. when we get those large shrouds running into our city. And that's the thing, just to give you an idea, there are schools, I would say, within hundreds of feet, within blocks of the border. So what they're talking about, if one of them start to rush in like they got the group yesterday, uh, that's what they're having to deal with, putting a strain on not only the police department, on the health department, and also schools, thinking of the schools and those who are in here, could you only imagine having to not only get that call that your kids are on lockdown because they're in the middle of a search. So uh, that ends tonight at nine o'clock, what that's going to bring 
The answer of that is still unknown to many. Governor Hobbs, you heard her earlier in the week when asked about the numbers or what to expect. It is really an unknown right now, guys. But one of the things you can't forget are these small cities that are right on the border here that are going to have to deal with them. As I mentioned, we saw the lines over at Kokopa. That's out on the outskirts of Yuma. When they come through this border, uh, you'll see them walking in the neighborhoods, and that's mm -hmm. the scary part, especially for most families. And it seems the same thing we hear from all of these smaller communities, Gibby, is that they just don't have the resources, mm -hmm. and that's really sad.